wrapped up, but they are not expired. Oh shit, here we go again. I've been working on my components for five years straight to get it perfect, but just because I've been working on a component, you guys have seen that, does not mean that there's an actual lipstick inside of it that I kept on a shelf and sold to you guys. Second of all, my lipsticks are not moldy. They are not hazardous, they are not contaminated, they are not unsafe for you in any way, shape, or form. Every single ingredient in my lipstick is new and it is FDA approved. And again, I will give you proof right here if you You guys want to look over these documents in depth and tear Bruh. them apart you go right ahead and see that they are not contaminated every single ingredient is fda approved and they are not expired all right so the first thing i want to touch base on are the little black dots or black holes that you guys are seeing what these black dots are are actually oxygen bubbles and they are being lifted to the surface when my lipstick bullet is being cooled off when it's going from a hot temperature fresh out of the vat and it's going to go into my actual component and just be cooled down so that the component cap can be put on top in that process sometimes those oxygen bubbles don't make it all the way through and you'll see little itty bitty almost like black like holes it's not actually like black holes The second thing I want to touch on is the texture and the grittiness that you guys are seeing in your lipsticks. And basically what this is caused from is the humongous vats. It's almost like, I always want to use the word beaker, but it's not like a beaker or smaller. It's like these gigantic, huge vats. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you something. <laughs> we don't care. They're in labs. It's like this gigantic thing that holds all of your lipstick and it like what, what is that? like this a and bomb? everything up. That vat is not breaking down all of my raw materials because we produce so many lipsticks so quickly. <laughs> so. Next, let's talk about the white fuzzies. This is the thing that gets me going. Because my lipstick component is a silver, shiny, almost metal-like material, my lab, instead of using a standard glove that they would use in the lab, they decided to use white cotton gloves. They're like fluffy white gloves because they didn't want the standard gloves to put any smears on this component, to in any way have any sort of prints on it, so they wanted to do a white fluffy glove. There is no lab in the United States that has an over-the-counter drug manufacturing license that would ever bring cotton gloves into their facility. It is a health hazard, it's an issue. Cotton is easily contaminated. Um, it's also not impermeable, meaning that it allows anything to go through it. Um, so you would never use that on a production floor. Um, potentially it could be used during the boxing process, but those areas are completely separated and there's no chance of cross-contamination in an over-the-counter drug manufacturing facility like it it's just not possible On top of that, they were cleaning my vats, which is the big humongous bucket that has my batches inside of it. They were cleaning those vats with like this white fiber, almost towel going through it. And that's been happening about once a day, they said, to sometimes twice a day, depending how quickly we're moving through batches. Um, this doesn't happen. They don't use fabric. They don't use cloth to clean anything in those types of facilities. They use boiling hot water followed by 100% ethanol, which completely cleans out and eliminates all chance of bacteria. They would never introduce anything like cotton into that space. It's huge risk of contamination. It would never happen. Not possible. There's just no way. Lastly, I want to talk about the melting issue. People are receiving some lipsticks in the mail and then they pull them out, they twist them up, they swatch them, they break. They break in the center. As so you twist them up all the way, they'll break at the base, which is pretty standard even if you don't have a melted lipstick. If you roll all the way up and you swatch it, chances are if it's an emollient base lipstick, it's going to break at the base. But what people are experiencing is it's showing up in the mail and it's almost having like 
a little sweat mark, like a little like circular sweat mark or like little like sweat dots. And then when you swatch it, the lipstick kind of leans to the side and then it's got like a little, little line on it because it's a very creamy, very emollient based product. So you really have to make sure that it's fully cooled down before using it. Because of the climate right now, we are shipping to some people who are in such hot temperatures and such high degree that my lipsticks, they're not surviving it fully. I'm going to work very hard and I'm gonna work very diligently to make sure that within the next couple of months, within the next year, you're gonna look at my brand and be like, oh wow, this actually is good. Like she actually corrected her error and she learned from her mistakes because it's exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm.